Greetings, YouTube. It is I, Sakarma, coming with a total Brohammer installment here with a uh, little 1v1 action. I myself am heading the High Elves against PDT, Rogue Pineapple, uh, heading the Dwarfs, Rogue Pineapple. Truly a terrifying, terrifying sight. Um, I'll just let this one go because it's a little bit of posturing. But uh, yeah, uh, is there anything more uh, feared than a Rogue Pineapple? I don't know. Pineapple with nothing to lose. <laughs> you know, he's, he's recently fallen off the tree and he is just ready to ready to give it. Really just give it to the world. Anyway, so what did I bring? A um, couple of Swordsmen of Hoth. I think I brought four of them. So I guess that's more than a couple. It's double a couple. Uh, so yeah, four Sword Masters of Hoth. One, two, three White Lines of Three? Something like that? Yeah. And I think I gave them a few Chevrons. I did. Because I had some money left over, like 200. And I was like, I don't want to bring Spearman. But a couple of uh, Archers. Take their get down Slayers. I brought Teclas on a horse because he's pretty mobile. I brought one Ithlamar Chariot. So I think they're better than um, Dragon Princes in this matchup. Uh, just because they have higher mass, fewer units, you can heal them easier, uh, and they can just roll through easier. I brought a bolt thrower to distract them in case they brought a lot of, um, uh, what's it called, uh, artillery, but they didn't. Uh, they brought a non-artillery dwarf force, which is pretty cool. I got a nice, uh, yeah, I saw this formation moving, so I cast, um, what are this spells called? Chain Lightning. And it does, meh, not great. A little bit of damage. Could have been better. Uh, I was hoping it would go this way into their formation, but, you know, did a little bit of damage. Uh, and then as they're getting shot at by these guys, you know, anything I can do to slow them down only costs 14 spend, so I don't really mind that, which isn't, I mean, 14, um, wins of magic, which is actually a lot, but, yeah, as you can see, I'm getting good damage on them, you know, hurting their front lines, uh, hurting their back lines. Uh, so what did my opponent bring before we start? He brought a lot of gunners, so that's one, two, three, four gunners, uh, and then he brought Uthar's Raiders alongside with some Slayers in the back, one of the dragback variety, um, some Dwarf Wars with great weapons. Dwarf Warriors in the front, more Dwarf Warriors with great weapons over here, uh, Dwarf Warriors, Dwarf Warriors, probably better bringing off Dwarf Warriors with great weapons across the board, I don't know why you'd bring Dwarf Warriors in this matchup, maybe for their melee defense, he just wanted to hold while he fires, but yeah, uh, it's an interesting, interesting build, like a lot of gunners, and uh, it's actually not a bad move, especially considering um, you're going to be expecting elite from Dwarf, this kind of wide build with gunners is uh, pretty effective, but I think it's a little too tight is the problem, but anyways, he sends these Slayers in uh, to, to get rid of these guys, but they're already shooting at them, I mean, again, they were just a, a bait. Uh, and as he's been doing that, I've been positioning my units around him because uh, I don't want to attack that front line straight on. So I start coming in here. Uh, I'm moving everything around. Um, uh, I'm getting this nice little downhill engagement. He is trying to reposition. I'm trying, you know, making him work for it. I don't mind these white lines of threats fighting these slayers. More than happy to make that engagement. And I start coming in with these war master hosts from the back line against his slayers. So the trap has been sprung. Unfortunately, I've also trapped myself in that. In all this, you know, repositioning, I've lost uh, a few units uh, in terms of micro. Uh, but you can see he only gets like one or two good volleys off um, from this front line, although he is on a hill, which is pretty solid. But then I'm going to get a nice another chain lightning here, now that they're sat. Um, and yeah, it's going to go start, oh, it just does so much damage to that unit, it starts going down. If it only continued that direction, it would have been great, but it really can't go wrong, there's a lot of units here. Um, these Ultra Raiders here are doing great, great damage, but it just sort of curls around and ah, kind of does a little bit of damage, but then it starts, starts really going down the line here. So it was a really good uh, chain lightning, I got pretty lucky on it. Um, it was just a, you know, disruption. He, he was able, because with the uh, Slayers and these Ultra Riders, to get rid of them. I'm going to send these guys right through, I'm going to keep path them right after these Ultra Riders and hopefully drive them into combat, and luckily I do. And they're not the worst combatants, but they are going to lose, obviously, Sword Master Poeth, which are one of the best in the game. Um, over here, the White Lions are losing. I don't know how. Maybe the Gunner support, they should be winning, but White Lions, classic. Uh, you can never really trust them to perform. I am still positioning some forces over here. I did forget one unit over here. That was very bad on my part, but uh, we'll see how that plays out. Um, these Swordmaster Hoth are actually taking a lot of damage. I don't know what from. I guess just the number of units around them. But these archers are firing through. They have, uh, they're have in the trees. They are going to shoot a tech list, but I don't mind. You can heal. Um, over here, Swordmasters are losing. And it really didn't look good for me. I have one unit here back in reserve again. I forgot them. I was just micro elsewhere. Um, but yeah, it's not looking good for me. My Swordmaster Sword Charge did not do as much damage as I needed it to do. Uh, a lot of his uh, firing line is still very much in, in control. Um, I have the Ithamar Chariots in, per in near perfect health, so that's good. And I am getting rid of these Ultras Radars, which is Radars. <laughs> these Ultras Radars. Yeah, they, they bring Radars into battle. Classic classic Dwarven trickery. But, um, yeah, but uh, other than that, just the Ithamar Chariots are really the only thing I have. And, of course, Teclis is around, just, you know, casting magic, riding around, doing his thing. Um, I tr oh, I got a nice on that blob there, and it does a lot of damage, actually. So that was a nice little chain lightning. It's not really, I mean, I don't know if it's the best spell to cast against them, It's you know, because it's kind of risky. But it is just a fun, fun spell, because it does so much damage when it works. Um, he's got gunners everywhere still. Uh, he still has one, two, and they're in decent health. I finally bring in these uh, ones in reserve, these two units, which, again, was not on purpose, was not deliberate. It was just me being bad. But um, it kind of worked out, I guess, now that they're in reserve because their lines are all fucked. 
Uh, these Ithomar chariots are pretty much have free reign in the back. Obviously, I have to keep them moving at all times, or else they will get whittled by those gunners. Over here, he's charging with his slayers. I bring in Teclis just to slow him down, hopefully do some damage, and a, and a regrouped unit of um, uh, white lines over here. Uh, the, the These guys are just, you know, doing their thing, being tears uh, on the a dwarf line, as uh, chariots are known to do. They're just running through. He does have a rune lord here. Um, as their lord, so not, you know, not the most dangerous uh, lord uh, for the dwarves, but again, he will be doing damage over time because of those uh, he can't cast those runes. Um, the Ithamar chariots, I'm just really, I'm really focusing on them because they're, they're important. These guys, I'm like, okay, just run away, yeah, draw these slayers away, draw these dwarf warriors. I don't mind. This is where the fight's happening, anyways. I pass, I pass these guys through. I'm just like, okay, leave this dwarf lord, leave these, you know, dwarf warriors. Get on the gunners because that's the most dangerous part. And I have some regrouped uh, sword master of Hoeth. I have everything coming back that I can. Over here, he's able to beat these white lines of Thrace, or white lines of Thrace again with almost little, like no damage to dwarf warriors. Like white lines of Thrace are so bad. Um, I mean, in some matchups they're okay, but nine, nine times out of ten they're terrible. Uh, he has marked by Ulthar, which is a really good ability. It's going to make them, you know, less missile parry, missile resistance, and uh, slower, but or not slower, less armor. But uh, you know, I'm okay with that. Uh, my these units are, fa are fairly healthy. I don't know what they're getting hit by. It looks like they're getting hit by something. These guys are master. Oh, it's just the, they're spread out. Okay, master ruin of Varath ruin, which is going to do really well against those units. Um, I have this unit of sword masters on these gunners, their thunderers, and they are going to take them down rather quickly. That's what are they? How are they still shooting? They're getting murdered. <laughs> they're shooting while getting murdered. Yeah, but anyways, and they are going to rout these guys off. Come on! They are going to actually flee, even though that they are far superior warriors. But with the Lithomar chariot, that should help uh, boost their morale again. Uh, this unit is quite healthy, sword master horse, but he does have more runes, wrath, and ruin. That can change in a hurry. This unit is pretty damaged. He does have slayers, which are still which are still pretty scary. Teclis is riding around here, and I have a little surprise in store for the dwarves here with Teclis. And the surprise is that I brought. Let's slow it down. I brought something I've never brought before, and that is never done before. The sword of Teclis. Before he came in barehanded, he would just punch the shit out of his enemies, and uh, as you can see, it was pretty ineffective at 280. But oh, I didn't know he has a uh, martial prowess. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Anyways, um, is it like a what's this? Self, interesting, interesting. Oh, um, but yeah. So uh, I brought you know Net of Amatok just in case they charged at me. Chain Lightning. I never use it though. In Feebly Foe, I use multiple times in the matchup. But anyways, so let's look at this. So 60% damage. So it's gonna go to about um, let's say plus 150. So it's gonna go about to 430. Uh, he's gonna get 44 melee attack. So it's gonna take the melee attack to way up if unless he loses martial prowess. But let's just say he doesn't. So that's uh, 60. That's 42. It's 82. Um, and it's last 46 seconds. Wow. It has 60% armor piercing. So he's basically going to be like a regular lord uh, with pretty decent melee stats. Obviously, he's not the most survivable because 50 armor, but still, pretty decent melee stats for 46 seconds. So that's an interesting, interesting ability. I've never really thought to bring it. But uh, as you can see, um, I, eventually I'm going to pop it, and we're going to see how effective it is. And I only used it once this whole matchup. I'm probably going to be using it the whole time and, you know, throwing him in the fight a little bit more. But Because he does have pretty much regeneration with the potion of Kuroi or whatever it's called, Chiroi. But, um, yeah, I didn't want to be too uh, risky with him. But I do come around here. I do pop it. So let's see if my predictions were correct. So, yeah, about 448. How much of that is armor piercing? 139. It's not the best. But we can see we are doing good damage to this Rune Lord. Um, before he was quite healthy, but now he's taking some serious damage. Uh, and I, 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 make it, I enfeebled him. And he doesn't have the greatest stats to begin with. So at 25, I should be hitting him pretty much every time. And he's doing okay, Teclis, in terms of a Lord Killer. He's not doing terribly. And he's not going to take too much damage back. So, yeah, sort of Teclis. Not a bad pick, I think, against the Dwarves. Um, but, yeah, over here, we're just doing some serious damage. He does cast a Rune of, Arm, uh, Rune of Oath and Steel, which is going to help them. Especially these uh, Dragon Max Slayers. That's pretty good synergy. Because uh, now they have 60 armor, so they're just terrifying. But um, they are going to lose. Uh, he does cast with that. It looks like someone's being... Oh, the guys are... Uh, yeah, Master Rune of uh, Wrath and Ruin. It makes sense on these uh, Sword Masters. So that's going to pretty much get rid of them. But my other my chariots are alive. Teclis is alive, and Teclis is winning this fight. Teclis is the better fighter. Um, he does cast a Master Rune of Negation, but even without his uh, abilities, I mean, I think Teclis. No, Teclis will lose. But now that so much damage has been done that uh, I think Teclis can actually carry this out. And again, I have regeneration. He doesn't because of the potion of Kuroi. and then I can enfeeble and foe him, which I do multiple times. So yeah, Teclis over here is a little duelist. You know, you think of him as just a little spellcaster, a dainty little spellcaster, but no, he's in fact a duelist. And then I bring the Sword Master of Hoeth to come in and help out, and I think at this point the battle's decided. Um, he has some spread out units all around, but uh, I've sort of crushed the line, so let's just go to speed up here, because it's just kind of, as dwarves are known to do, they don't really rout, and they fight to the end, and it's just kind of a slugfest. I mean, we're talking about two non-great fighters here, and then, yeah, and then they just run around, and um, we're going to, you know, mop up these slayers here. So they're going to charge in, you know, Valley to the last stand. I, I think I, oh yeah, and I cast... 
I cast a uh, Chain Lightning just for fun. It ends up doing more damage to my units than his, but and there's a little chain, chain. I had the magic for it, so I cast a final Chain Lightning. I'm just running through here, and they're feebly foed, and then they will be cut down. And that shall be the end of the Dwarfs. And a uh, War of the Beard kind of replay here. War of the Beard, but told uh, alternate history where uh, Sakarma led the elves to victory against the rogue pineapple dwarves. Fallen, newly fallen from the tree with nothing to lose. And, uh, oh man, I wish I had another like synonym for pineapples. It's just mango, mangoey, or citrusy uh, uh, fury <laughs> descending upon our knife-eared uh, uh, contingent. Anyways, GG to my opponent, Rogue Pineapple. I played him multiple times on ladder. Excuse me. Played him multiple times on ladder. And, uh, yeah, nice guy, I think. I never spoke to him, but you know, it was always a fun time. He's a decent, he's a good player. Uh, so I have um, Ithamar Chariot, 120 kills almost, 119. Uh, pretty effective. I think uh, it was really, you know, the start of the game because uh, everything else performed not that great. Although 220 kills is a ton on Swordmasters. Wow, against Dwarves, that's a lot. But I guess they bring all, they brought a lot of chaff. But yeah, so um, yeah, the my chariots were really the the, the, the the winners here. No Chevron because they were killing a lot of uh, Thunderers, but they got in the back line and were able to mess up a lot of these Thunderer units and prevent them from firing, which really helped uh, tip the balance in my favor because it was not going well at the beginning. Um, the archers, you know, whatever, they were just there to take down slayers, and 45 kills isn't terrible, and they were also served as a distraction. These guys, you know, sacrificed their lives, uh, not in vain, uh, for, for victory. Um, I did have some chevron, these guys were chevron up before, so those aren't real, but uh, 134 kills on those, those were probably the ones that came in at the end of the battle, and were able to mop up some of those guys. Same here, 220, uh, those were chevrons they gained, so, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of murdering done on that side. 60, 76 kills, a lot of that's the chain lightning, um, so yeah, he did all right. On my opponent's side here... As you can see, a lot of chaff, so just, and again, I brought a pretty small army, and he actually whittled us down pretty pretty low. Um, but yeah, they did a lot of damage here across the board. Um, they actually got a chevron, that's interesting, or maybe I put it on there, I don't know, I'll never know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they didn't get enough damage out with their gunners, but their slayers did a lot of damage. And he brought three of them, I didn't realize he brought three, which actually isn't a bad move, because they're unbreakable. So yeah, they'll lose to all the, the high elf infantry, probably even white lines of Thrace, but they will not run, so that's pretty useful. Um, not that dwarves are prone to running. Uh, these guys didn't do that great. Uh, you're probably better off bringing Longbeards of Great Weapons. But then, I, I understand his, his idea here, which is go wide, 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 and let his gunners get the, the work done. Um, the difficulty was that, I mean, maybe a Tormentor Sword would have helped, because he could have locked down those chariots, and that would have been huge. Uh, Tormentor Sword would have helped here. Uh, he'd probably drop, maybe a Slayer, bring a Tormentor Sword may have helped. Uh, who knows? Um, yeah, I like the, the pick, though. I like the build. It's an interesting pick, and it's not a Dwarf Box, which you see a lot of, so many Dwarf Boxes. Corner camping dwarf boxes, just cancer. Cancer, cancer. Worse than cancer. Mega cancer. It's like if Hitler morphed into a disease, and then that disease m mutated and conjoined with cancer. That's the type of thing that dwarf boxing is, to me. Obviously, if people love uh, dwarf corner camping, I mean, I love dwarfs. I just think corner camping is lame. Anyways, I gotta take a shit. Uh, and I will see you guys around the bend.